Welcome to the Philip Wiley Show. Take a look behind the curtain of professional hacking and hear compelling discussions with guests from diverse backgrounds who share a common curiosity and passion for challenges and their job. And now, here's your host, offensive security professional, educator, mentor, and author, Philip Wiley. Hello and welcome to a live episode of the Philip Wiley Show. So this is only the second one that we've done so far, but uh, I had the honor of bringing on Dan and Ken, who happen to be the founders and coordinators for Red Hack Con and Hack Space Con. I had the opportunity to attend that last year, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, earlier this year, and they've got their upcoming conference. So we're just kind of on to discuss that today and, and one of the nonprofits that they run. So welcome to the show, guys. Hey, Phil. How are you? Great to be here. Good. Great to have you guys. Awesome, man. Yeah, we're uh, we're super excited. We have the conference coming up around the corner, so we're in uh, we're in full full motion and um, yeah, excited about it. It should be a pretty awesome, pretty awesome event. Very cool. So yeah, I love what you guys are doing and what you're doing for the community. Uh, one of the things I love, you know, we were just talking about uh, Ken and I before the show started, how summer camp's amazing. But the the thing I love about your conference is all the people that I want to see are there, and these are pretty well known people in the industry, and they're easier to find and it's less crowded. So people that kind of have anxieties and don't like the big crowds, it's perfect for them, but, but as well as everyone else too. So it's, it's really great what you guys are doing. Yeah, we we appreciate that. You know, when we when we first organized the conference, even came up with the idea, our biggest thing was we wanted to follow the tradition of being a hacker conference. We didn't want to be a vendor con. Uh, we understand how things work and funding and you know and sponsorship and all that, but we wanted to take a more hands on approach towards what we all all of us as founders. I mean, lifetime of of you know hands on technical training getting involved, getting your hands dirty, learning. And it's great, the theoretical, right? So we talk about training and, and we're all really involved in that and mentoring. But at the end, you have to you have to roll up your sleeves and get to work. So we when we designed the conference, the whole the whole thesis was to bring that hands on training um, and then to be able to make obviously all the connections and, and introduce people that as an example, right, someone like yourself that people follow online and and just, man, I'd love to talk to Phil. Someone that's getting into the industry can sit down and have a 20 minute serious conversation, which could lead to a lifetime relationship. And that that's one of our big things, trying to figure out how to build those bridges um, and, uh, and and bridge that between the, the most experienced and professionally connected people in the industry and people that are just trying to break in. Yeah, that's one of the things I loved is being able to spend time with people like at DEF CON and Black Hat. It was hard to find the time, you know, hard to find the people, but just to have that time to sit down and, and speak with people is nice. The, all the after hours events that you had throughout the week, uh, it was really great. And one of, one of my favorite moments was I had a couple that was there from Louisiana that were, he was a listener to my podcast and he showed up because I was teaching a workshop there and got to meet one of the listeners in person. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, and Ken and I were talking about, so Ken volunteered at the red team village and Ken, I mean, just all the relationships, all the contacts of, you know, being at the conference and, and our, you know, one of the big things that we tell people every day, every single day is try to volunteer at any conference. Um, as a, you know, we, we run a red team offensive security firm and I look at resumes every month and I say to the guys every single time, do they have community work on their resume? Right. So volunteer at these conferences. It's a, an amazing way to build relationships. It's a, both on a personal level and also on a, a business level. It builds value for the organization you're with. Um, and then more importantly, y y there's so much to learn. I mean, there's so many brilliant people in our industry. So bringing all them together and then volunteering and participating and giving back to the community, it, it just it creates so much goodwill for your own career, for for all the community um, and to impact people, especially with one of our big focuses with the conferences to figure out people that are low income or neurodiverse, right, where it's hard, have social anxieties and soft skills are a challenge to find that bridge and to bring it together. Volunteering is a, a great way. Ken, maybe you could, you know, your experience with just at DEF CON, I know was so many connections. Yeah, totally. I, I love volunteering. I went to DEF CON just to attend initially. And then it was like, all right, well, I have some experience in the conference space. So let me um, go ahead and uh, my super loud. No, you get. 
<laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so I have some experience in the conference uh, planning space, obviously, through our things. Um, so I went to attend and decided to volunteer. And through that, um, just met so many people. I, it was sort of um, back to my roots of volunteering at DerbyCon and the first Hack Red Con before I got on board with uh, the rest of the team for Hack Space and Red Seer in general. Um, and it's just such a different experience and so beneficial. And it, it just shows, you know, your willingness to help out with the rest of the the hacker space as well as, you know, interact with the professionals all the way down to the new new people, which is kind of the point of all of our conferences, right? You know, like see some new novel techniques and trainings and TTPs. It's also hang out with our friends and introduce new people to the space. Pun intended. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's <laughs> awesome too. Because one of the things I think people get a really good chance to see, uh, you know, what the, the community is really like, you know, because a lot of times it's kind of hard to get yeah. that from some of the more business uh, CISO type of uh, security conference you go to, some of these vendor conferences. So some of those are, are, you know, can be that way. So getting an idea of seeing what the real cybersecurity community is like, it's just really, uh, you know, motivational for people. So it's really, really great to see that. Yeah, definitely. And you know, it's interesting. It's it's I was just reading an article about and just the old the old argument, right, that security isn't looked at as an asset, it's looked at as an expense, right? So it's 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 not even like CISOs aren't even in the board making the decisions, looking at it, talking about it. You might have a CFO, um and I had a little bit of experience there. I came from a finance background, and it's just sitting in the board and hearing the conversations. It's it's as if security is it's it's just a compliance issue. You know, it's a checkbox. And I think it, part of our, our conference is to not only support the hacking community, but to bring those business leaders, government leaders into the space and teach them what we know, but the way we think, the way we understand. And I think part of that will help, you know, just relationships in general, right, between the executive board and security teams. Um, and so that, that to me is one of our big things, right? So using the conference to build those bridges in a variety of ways, because I think it's a, we all know it's a huge issue. Um, and for, for all of us to, to figure out, I mean, all these, you know, critical, you know, security, you have critical infrastructure at risk constantly, right? Um, from all angles. So I think that the, uh, the idea that we could continue to bridge that and, and try to figure out how to solve solutions together, not only as a community, but as a country, as, as industry, um, I think is a, an interesting thing that comes from these conferences, building it on a grassroots level, which is our, like our biggest thing. We were on another podcast. Um, we bootstrapped the first hack red with barely anything. Right. And so, um, and, and so that the interesting part of it is, is that when you come together and you leverage good relationships, goodwill. And one thing that we've learned, Phil, along the way, Ken and Zachary, everyone can attest to this. We, we do calls like this, like we're on, we'll be on a call with every person that is, wants to be a volunteer, a sponsor, a student, a veteran. We have, you know, veteran scholarships, et cetera, that we're involved in. Um, we do this. And through those meetings, those interactions, we've built so many relationships. We figured out how to solve so many problems with very limited resources. So putting these conferences together or volunteering um, doesn't have to be as um, resource intensive as th as it's thought about. And I think when you bring all that together and all the goodwill of training and mentoring, it's it's like I say all the time, I can mentor one or two people really well, but together 20 of us can mentor thousands of people really effectively. So I think the idea of like exponential leverage and training and mentoring, creating recursive training models, um, I think is, uh, is, a, is a great benefit with the conference. Yeah, and some good points to that too is how we know diversity benefits things. So diversity of teaching types, uh, speakers, uh, yes. you know, mentors and all that. And one of the other things before I forget about it, one of the things I love about the conference is the fact that you get, you find some of the best people in the industry to speak. It's not pay for play, pay for play vendor conference because some of those I've seen some people and I kind of advise them, if you want to have some vendors in there giving talks, have them do something vendor neutral uh, really do a CFP, you're going to get a better uh, lot of speakers in there than my company, you know, paid for uh, vendor sponsorship and I speak and it's a bunch of vendor pitches or you get a lot of people sometimes that really don't even really want to speak. They're kind of forced into it. Their managers yes. say, yeah, we need someone to speak at the conference. They pull an SE and they're up there, you know, giving a talk and they haven't spoken at conferences yet, but they've given a lot of vendor pitches and, and that's what you get. Yeah, that, I mean, it just goes back to the root of like when we first started, we 
and we, one of one of the first people that committed with Hack Red um, was Zach Ed Scotus, Zach's one of his first teachers and mentors, and um, and we, you know, I, I, obviously after Hack Red, we, Ed decided to come to Hack Space. It was amazing, right? And Ed, Ed said it. There's, you know, public out there. He goes to those, you know, conferences, and that's you know part of what he does, but. He, when he came to Hack Space, I mean, he did a two-hour workshop training, a social engineering training. It was amazing. I mean, that kind of training is, in my opinion, someone that cherishes, you know, the engineering of humans, uh, to me, priceless. I mean, it was just amazing. And he did it for free. Yeah. I mean, it's not, we don't pay. And he has, it's just all of us giving back together. It's super impactful. And and it goes, another thing is, you know, when, when we, figured out like how are we going to do this we didn't want to just be like a um like a marketing pr tool right like take pictures because we're putting these things together no we we legitimately wanted to figure out how do we bring training how do we mentor and the most important part is how do we get people jobs how do we land them jobs we bring the companies together we build connections we use ctfs super important anybody getting into the industry ctf CTF, I can't explain how important it is. One for not only com- competition wise, because if you do well, you can prove yourself, but more importantly, the camaraderie, the friendships, the relationships, the connections. Um, a lot of people that compete are from other companies, right? So um, all of that together is the real power of it. And ultimately, we can train people, we can mentor them, guide them, connect them, and then ultimately help them You know, with the with the last step, which to me is the most important part of what what we're trying to push for is to get people better, you know, into a better economic position. I mean, I use a story from Hack Red that um, t- really put me in tears. Uh, it was a young man at risk, meaning went to prison or jail, just had a troubled life, but was so motivated to change from a outskirt of um, in 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 Lullaville, I say Louisville, um, rural community. He told me I came from a community, family, for just drugs and bad things and all that. Okay, kind of had that hacking mentality. He was as a young kid and had gotten trouble. Totally changed his life. As much free training, came to volunteer, etc. Um, got his first job offer through our organization and called me crying. This is a 28 year old man with, you know, as a father trying to change his life. And hearing that story, Phil, it was the real, you know, it just, it, it, we knew at that moment, this is something that could, that could impact really our whole country. I mean, there's so many communities around the country that, you know, need, need help like this, if, especially for people that are interested or veterans trying to transition. So yeah, <laughs> I just, I love telling that story because it, it was a real life impact, you know, and hearing somebody and you know, for that young man who's only made twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, I think his mother his the, you know, the sister, two kids all living in one small home in a poor community can make upwards of a hundred thousand dollars in his first couple of years. His whole, his whole life is the children's life change. I mean, to, to me, when we talk about community impact and development, it's not just photographs with, you know, certain demographics and all it's about how do we actually solve the problems together? Um, and so, uh, I know I'm rambling a little bit, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm just so passionate about it, man. You know, it's just, and, and hearing those, those stories and there's countless others, but, uh, yeah, so. Well, I just love, pretty awesome. love the whole mission. And that's one of the things I love about you guys and, in, and in, in your conference. And I think that's good. And, and speaking on the CTF thing for anyone listening, if you're introverted and have a hard time socially, CTFs is one of the best things you can do because you're able to collaborate with people that are like-minded. You're comfortable around them. It's not like being shoved in a room with a lot of people. You can find your little area, find your team, and and just mentioning the whole networking and getting to know each other. If you're a beginner, you're trying to get in to cybersecurity. If you're connected to the community, you're volunteering, you're going to find a job a lot easier than someone that's doing the traditional route of trying to apply online, bypass, try to get through that HR firewall, because even highly, uh, you know, experienced people, people with all the credentials have a hard time, much less if you're a beginner or someone or someone fairly new to the industry, it's a lot more difficult. But if you really manage to uh, leverage the community, uh, the networking and all that, you're going to have a lot easier time. And then some of the things you mentioned with the criminal background, that is like near impossible for someone if they don't have yeah. the right connections. I mean, I remember yes. I, I'd connected uh, Ken with someone with a background like that because 
poor guy was volunteering all over the place, working hard, taking every certification he could take and just was not getting a, a chance anywhere. And I'm sure there's someone out there that would give someone like that a chance. And then having someone that has worked with people like that is, is awesome because there's a lot of people out there yeah. that had bad breaks. And all of us, if we're put in a bad situation, we're going to do the wrong thing. We're going to do the wrong things. But all I think most people, if you have the opportunity to do it legally and legitimately, that we're going to do that. It's, you touch on a point that. I want to say it surprises me, though it doesn't. Um, so many people still don't know what we do for a living, all of us, that it's even a legal path. I speak to salespeople all the time that, that don't know that what they do as a salesperson, as a customer service agent, uh, involves quite a bit of social engineering. They, don't, they didn't even know that social engineering was a thing, meaning there's they didn't know about the training, the conferences, that. So I think there's still a lot more um, where we can grow with this. And I totally agree with you. Um, I think more organizations need to be more flexible and open. Obviously, if, it, if there's government restrictions involved, et cetera, there's challenges. No, but if people are at risk, I still think companies should look at them. We know many um, people that have been in trouble. These are well-documented people, some of the most famous. These are some of the best red teamers in the world because they have the mindset. Um, and I think that it's important as a, as I just think as a community that we have, you know, some reasonable forgiveness, right? If, if someone makes a mistake and they get in trouble or maybe a years of in trouble, let's try to find a path, right? I mean, it's not good for our community to rehouse people and get them in jail, the whole system. It's what you're mm -hmm. talking about. And it goes back to when you build community grassroots communities, you can support people that need help. And I think that's, it's about infrastructure. It's about having a good friend to call when you're in trouble. Or like in, in our case, if you're trying to learn pen testing, just having, having somebody that you could reach out to, you know, we, we build these networks in discord. Um, we, you know, we're part of the discord servers and on there, there's hundreds of some of the best pen testers that offer mentoring for free, absolute free. you all the, all the only thing that we all care about is to see that you're interested and hungry to want to learn that gets as a mentor, the most motivating thing is when your student comes to you and asks you questions and gets involved. Like they want, they want to be involved. Cause to me um, it's, it's uh, it's, it's just super energetic and, and you get to give back that way. So um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think providing support for communities that need help is, uh, is essential, honestly. I'd, I'd like to chime in a little bit. Uh, Dan, you touched on how one of the things that people say is unique about our conference is that we interview we have a call with every single person that submits a paper, submits a training, submits a sponsorship, all of that stuff. And that's incredibly unique. And it allows us to not only get to know the person a little better, but also kind of see if they're part, if they are part of this community that we're trying to build or would be a good fit to come to our conference and participate. Um, meaning they're trying to give back. They're bought into the mission. They're going to be receptive yes. to new people as well as old people. Uh, in the industry, uh, not an age thing, but, you know, time in the industry, but also open to changing lives and making this not just about selling a product, but yes. selling an experience. And I think that's important to touch on because we've had all our trainers are coming back to new, you know, when's the next conference because they had such a good time. And, you know, so hopefully Philip will join us again. And yeah, I hope to. I, I was disappointed I wasn't able to make it, but I was already committed <laughs> so if it would, yeah, yeah, I would have been there. Uh, you know, I just, and just to touch on that point, you know, to what Phil said earlier. See, part of this is a mindset. So, Phil, you mentioned your company paid for you; they pay for travel for you to come out. It's a it's a marketing tool, but what we can use that marketing dollar for is instead of just saying what's your KPIs, which is we've been on many of those calls, right? And when we got those calls, those I didn't. I chose executive decision in many cases with the first hack red to not accept that because it wasn't a good fit for us. You know, we needed funding, but it just wasn't the right fit. It goes back to what you're saying, Phil, is that if as a company you invest into the community, you pay uh, to fly for all your, your most experienced trainer to come out and do a talk and a training, the give back is more powerful in marketing effect than just the KPI metric. Obviously, yeah. KPI is important, right? We have to look at the numbers. We have to figure out what makes sense value-wise. But education, if you come to a conference and now I have your video and you go on and now you're on for 10 years, I have people looking at that video, it's long-term marketing value. 
Mm-hmm. And I think this is where the disconnect is with the boardroom is that the boardroom has to understand or at least think about how do I how do we leverage marketing and education together? And when we bring it together, um, you get this effect. And like you said, Phil, that um, the, the company, instead of them, then when we do these interviews, instead of them coming to us and saying, hey, we just care about KPIs, like, hey, we have Philip Wiley. We'd love to bring him out. We want him to talk and train, make some kind of partnership. That to me is how how you really get value as a corporate com- as a company or organization trying to get marketing value and PR value and awareness. And it's a good cause. I mean, that's to, to me, the, you know, the kind of the, the, the most important point, right. Is it's actual, it's a good cause for what we're all trying to accomplish. So it's, it's letting put money uh, companies put their money where their mouth is. They, they donate to these different well-known charities and some yeah. company do it just does it just to look good. Some of them do it from their heart. And this also at the same time helps the big security gap that we're seeing, you know, what you guys are doing, helping people get jobs, you're helping people get educated, uh, you know, with very affordable training, affordable to free training. And you're, you're offering these opportunities out there. So companies, like you mentioned, it's a good way to market your company. One of the things, you know, you look at companies, some of the companies out there, uh, like Bishop Fox, uh, trusted sec, they do a lot of content out there geared towards practitioners and companies I've been in, I've really tried to tell them, okay, you know, it's not just about the CISO, the practitioners are going to recommend your product. They're going to vet your product. Yes. So if you show people you're creating content out there to help them and it's not all about the money that really helps, uh, helps your marketing. I mean, it helps you get money. If I, if I want a pen test company, the ones that are doing these things, those are the ones I'm going to recommend because they're on the top of my mind because I'm constantly seeing them out, seeing them out there doing this type of stuff. No, I, I yeah, absolutely agree. I think it's can we we saw it with many of the you know the sponsors right that have supported with our conference. I mean when when they when they make a presence and support it, it's it, it makes sense right because like in Ken's case, you're, he's the chief security officer of our company, right? I'm the CFO. If there's a new vendor, you have to win Ken's heart. He's the practitioner. So I think that point of being able to, you know, communicate and relate and not all about the money, understand the practitioner, the technical side and what they care about. Right, Ken? I mean, we, we talk about it all the time. So. Yeah. And, if, and from anyone out there listening that works for a company that you're looking at marketing dollars and trying to get your brand out there, a good example is Jason Haddix with Budobot. Most of his budget is going out there to conferences. He's teaching at conferences. Yep. And when you do these type of things, you're not spending as much money to sponsor. Cause if you're just doing peer sponsorships, you know, you get your banner on stuff, but it's more impactful when you have a Jason Haddix represent his company, giving his time freely is more impressive than just seeing that sponsorship logo. You people may not even see it. They may not notice it. Absolutely. And from, yeah, you know, Jason's coming to, he went to Axe space and he's going to, be on our uh, re- keynote roundtable at Hack Redcon, um, but it's like you were talking about um, from a practitioner standpoint. We all are friends. We all work at different companies. We don't care. We're all changing secrets and fr- you know whatever. Um, and it's nice to have people there representing their company, but not in a competitive kind of uh, I don't know vendor con type scenario, right? We, we're all friends. We all have a uh, com, you know, community mission. And that's why we kind of pick and choose who can come and participate. And from that side of our conference, because we want them to be aligned with the, the mission, right? Um, Cause we all, you know, we're all trying to help the, you know, the overall cybersecurity landscape anyways, and improve it. And we're all in it together, right? As cheesy as that sounds. Yeah. No, and you no, know, but it's it's actually a great point. Something I wanted to bring up, you know, with Hackspace. So when we were talking about this, we raised over a hundred thousand dollars in education vouchers for training and subscriptions. Very thankful to, you know, many of the companies, TCM Security, Black Hills. Um, Black Hills has been amazing. They've provided a bunch for the anti siphon. So if there's people that are looking to break in, um, as an example, um, and many others, uh, zero point, um, altered security, um, offset gave us a few of the pen 200s. And, and so it was leveraging this to bring all this, edu- this education funding. Now we have vouchers. We've got some more, um, commitments from some new providers. All of those are free 
to the community. The only thing we ask, well, we have a couple of asks, um, one to volunteer somewhere. doesn't have to be with us. Volunteer anywhere. Find a B-sides, find anywhere. If you want to do DEF CON, it doesn't matter. Volunteer somewhere. Um, there's a, a lot of organizations that need help. Um, and then number two is once you get trained and we have a pathway. So because some of the vouchers are beginner some are actually for certifications, which are either intermediate or professional level, um, some very advanced. Uh, the, the idea is to, um, to once you take those certificates and you get certified and you're in a position where you're working, because obviously we're helping facilitate that if we can, or if not, you get a job somewhere else, to mentor somebody else. And it's this idea, what I call, it's just a you know, very simple you know, concept, concept, which is, you know, recursive education through mentoring and funding of education. So it's zero cost to the student. The, 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 the providers are, are, are providing those, right? Um, and at no cost. Once they get the training, they're able to mentor the next person. And we're able to build this, this community where we don't, we don't need a, a, a large corporate entity to come in and say, you know, hey, Phil, we need to get this shot. We need to get this talk. No, no. This, we are totally agnostic. We leverage who's the best that who cares the most and bring everybody together as a, compared to maybe one, you know, and you see this with some of the vendor cons, there's one huge sponsor and that's amazing. God bless them. And I understand the funding. It's complicated to get this type of funding. But once you do that and you get one big sponsor, obviously they're going to have influence naturally, right? It's not a bad thing, but it's, it, you can't get the agnostic community aggregate effect if there's just one or two or three big kind of organizations guiding it, as opposed to having, you know, a much flatter landscape where we can all come together. And, and then of course the friendship part and all that comes together. And yeah, so I just, yeah, I wanted, it's, I, yeah, one. Oh, it's awesome. Sorry to interrupt that. That, that, no. that gets me super excited talking about, man. I'm like, you know, whatever. Um, but when you come to our conference, you volunteer, you, you, or just come and participate. And it's a smaller kind of B-sides-y type environment where you can interact with everybody. So you're meeting all these contacts. You're trying to break into the industry. You talk to us and somehow get uh, awarded with a free certification that is kind of the ticket to ride the ride in uh, the, our field. You, you have to have the credentials, especially if you don't come from a traditional collegiate pathway. So at the end of the day, you get the contacts, the certification, and have the job referrals from those contacts and from you know our organization that knows all of these different like-minded businesses that need testers. Um, it's just sort of like the complete package. It's great. And, and I think at the end, you know, to to motivate people to want to mentor, you know, it is. So we talked about mm -hmm. this. It's like a, it, you know, it's a high to help to yeah. teach somebody if you've, and one other really important point, um, and I think all of us can attest to this in my own personal experience, the, the way I learn best is by teaching others. So in other mm -hmm. words, I learn the material, I get up on a whiteboard, for example, and then I teach four or five other people that are in my class mentoring. You don't have to be an expert of everything to mentor somebody. Yep. You can, you can do this and by the way, learn much quicker and more effectively by doing this, I think all of our universities and all across the board would, it would be advantageous to follow this practice. But, um, every person that we talk to, we tell them, teach somebody else, something mentor something, and it'll help you become better, but you'll also help somebody. And it's such a good feeling. Um, so yeah, that's kind of yeah. to me the, the final part. You know? it, it, and one of the things too, for anyone listening, no matter how new you you are, there's something that, you know, that the person behind you doesn't know. Uh, yes. one of the, one of the best things I did when I was starting out as a pen tester, you know, I'd worked in security for years, had a, a background in, uh, as a sysadmin and I was studying for the OSCP. I got my first pen testing job, but didn't have the hacking skills. So I signed up for the OSCP. One of the best things I did is I had, uh, three study partners that we studied virtually. One of the guys was in India. The other two were here in the States and the other two were in the States. We run to each other at conferences all the time. We've known each other since 2000, you know, for like 10 years now, best of friends. But when you're going through finding this information, you may find this really good information. If you're trying to study on your own without study partners or a mentor, it's a lot more difficult. You know, it's if you're working with others, it can make your life a lot easier when you when you have that. 100 um, percent. 
can maybe talk about our mentoring groups that we put together. If anybody out there wants to join, Ken, you could. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a similar experience as you, Philip. I'm still best of friends with the the ones I slugged through the OSCP with, and and we're you know global, right? And we're still after all these years are still good friends. They're probably watching this call right now. Um, what we've done um, with our certification through our Build Cyber program, uh, when we award folks um, a voucher to a specific certification, we let them come into our private Discord, our student Discord. Um, and our student Discord groups are um, not only us, our core Red Seer uh, pen testers that also have you know, the OSCP at a, at a baseline. We have, a lot of us have additional acronyms at the end of our name. Dan makes fun of <laughs> my numerous acronyms actually. Um, but so, so we're all, we're all sources of knowledge and we've also been there like firsthand, right? So we know what it's like to beat your head against the keyboard because you're stuck on a box or lose the motivation or, you know, the, the unspoken things like your family issues because you're spending yes. so much time on the computer to, in order to pass, like how we've all navigated that somehow successfully, right? So we can tell others how to do that. But it's sort of, it's interesting because like I use the OSCP as this example, the OSSEC Discord is like a, it's like DEF CON compared to our conference, right? It's just so big and so much going on. It can be intimidated to somebody. And oftentimes it's hard to find that smaller community group of people that you're going to actually joke with and learn how they act and turn into a friend as well as, you know, kind of like a military battalion platoon or something, go through the thick of things. So in our discord group, um, you know, it's people based on what certification that they're currently going. We also invited all of those mentor friends that are not necessarily in our organization that we've met, like yourself was mentioning and like I talked to, had them come on as mentors in our channel in our channel so that and they're people that we've vetted and that we know and trust are good and wholesome and non-toxic and not gatekeepers and all of those things that are necessary for people to be successful. Um we're pretty proud of that. And if you actually go to, um, well, actually, um, we will be releasing information on how to access those certifications very shortly. Um, very cool. If you'd like to be a part of that. And so one of the things we'll do for the listeners, we'll share the di their Discord channel, uh, links to their uh, website, as well as socials uh, in the show notes. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. Um, like you said, um, and if anyone doesn't see my name there, social janitor. So when you get into our discord, you can DM me directly um, as well. And uh, if you have any questions or help, I can, you know, answer or um, I, I respond pretty well for the most part. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you, Phil, for that. We, we, we definitely want to share, you know, share the information. That's one of the big things we're working on is just outreach. Um, we're, we're trying to get the words out to InfoSec teams, um, veteran organizations, um, community groups that are, you know, involved in education and trying to help, you know, at-risk communities, low-income communities. Um, and of course, obviously for this conference coming up with uh, around the Kentucky area and, and Louisville, um, if anybody knows somebody that um, has some interest, students and veterans, we do 50% off tickets. Um, that's a, that's a, a big thing also. And, um, and they can, they can follow up through all the social means as well. So so just out of curiosity, so what's the plan for the second conference that like the hack space con, are you going to be doing, doing that again next year? Yes. Yes. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> nice transition. So, um, yes, we're definitely going to be doing it there. The, the same venue plus, because one of the, uh, what the amazing things that happened is it sold out, which in just as from the behind the scenes, Ken always said to Dan, this thing's going to blow up. And I'm the, I'm a CFO, right? So I'm the pessimist of the group. <laughs> I, I like to dream, but I have to, at some point I have to be realistic, right? So I'm like, it's, it's just, it's, it's not going to be right. Um, anyway, we sold out. And so, and so we're working on an additional venue or more space because of all the demand. We want to figure out how to get, um, the, the way that space is designed, if you remember, it's this open hall. It's an amazing, it's actually mm -hmm. like a man, a space manufacturing facility. It's basically an industrial space, 8,000 square feet, but there's no walls to divide mm -hmm. the space. So we're trying to figure out that part of it. 
plus some additional um, space. We um, we st we all stayed at the Radisson. wasn't the cheapest, but they have conference space. So we're thinking maybe to rent all of that and possibly do 10, 15, I don't know, Ken, how many training rooms, but we're pretty excited. We think we're going to get a huge lineup of, uh, of different people from space, aero defense, cyber, um, and uh, we're really excited about it. Same time of the year, so we're planning to do it this spring. Um, around the time that this our conference with Hack Red um, takes place, we're going to um, right afterwards announce the dates, and we should have many of the speakers lined up. Uh, Phil, hopefully you'll be there with us. I know you already yeah. said you're, you're planning to, so we're, yep. uh, we're looking forward to that. And, um, and so, yeah, we're re really excited about it though. Um, we just want to figure out how to have more, more space because of all the demand so that we could have a better experience for everyone and, uh, streamlining registration. There was the challenge. Um, it was interesting. It's basically a theme park. So throwing a conference at a theme park has challenges. We had a sec change and this is kind of how, it's just funny how security works, right? We had a sec op change. Because to get everybody into the park, you have to pass through security, right? The, the park security. Mm -hmm. And there's a separate entrance, which we our understanding was that was what was going to happen. However, the theme park facility, which is actually a separate company that manages it, came out with a policy change that said everybody has to go through. So the whole operational plan, we spent weeks planning. The That was the <laughs> first day we were there setting up, got thrown out in the, the director there at the, at the, um, Kennedy, um, I just want to give a shout out as we're talking to him. His name's Chris, an amazing, the, the best of the best. This guy was so, he supported us in so many ways. Um, and hopefully he'll be there for next year, but he hands me a stack of theme park cards, uh, admission tickets. And he's like, Dan, here's how many do you need? And it was like five, 600 of them. And, uh, I had to get that to every single person coming up. So all those dynamics we're working on super excited about it. Um, but it should be a hell of a lineup of trainers, speakers. Um, are you, are you thinking maybe to come out and do a training Phil? Yes. At yep. Hackspace? Yeah. Oh man. Yep. That's yep. going to be big time. So, so, and that's just the point, right? Is yeah. to, to have people like yourself to, and, and what have you to come out and support. So, uh, yeah, really excited about that. So right, right after the conference hack red, we're going to have a bunch of details kind of coming around the conference time. And then right after we're going to push a uh, big, so we'll inform everybody what's going on. Very awesome. I'm excited about it. Yeah, it was, man. and to have the security issue, no one would have guessed. I mean, it was, it still, <laughs> it worked pretty smoothly. You know, um, I, and so we're, we're, we're entrepreneurs, right? Um, I, uh, I've spent most of my career, um, building businesses from the ground up and, uh, and you know, entrepreneurship, it's, it's about flexibility, business in general. We have to be agile. We have to be flexible. We have to be understanding. And so many people get angry all the time. And I'm, I'm a big believer, like kindness. It's so much easier to solve problems, to strategically hack kindness. I can walk into a building or I can solve a, a, a sec op problem with kindness a hundred times faster than getting angry, upset, mm -hmm. frustrated. So I just think a little bit of like, and that's a soft skill thing, right? We talk about it a lot in our industry, um, especially people that are, you know, on the spectrum, like, um, I have people in my family, my brother is, and he's really, you know, leveraged it to, 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 in his um, favor. One thing is about social skills is if we can be kind, we can solve those kind of problems that come up in entrepreneurship and business every day. Um, and I always feel like there's always a good solution out there. We just have to use kindness and, and being thoughtful and we have to listen to each other. Right. I think it's a huge thing. So no, appreciate that. Um, I thought it was chaotic, but <laughs> I'm glad to hear you guys didn't. Yeah. I, I, I like, I, I like our, uh, our take on conferences too, like it was at Kennedy Space Center. Now we're doing this one at the Louisville Slugger Museum. So it isn't just hotel, you know, regurgitated conference. And we're going to keep that trend going because um, I think it adds to the accessibility too, because honestly, not yeah. everybody that we're trying to reach can afford to stay at the hotels that some of these conferences are at. So this way you can kind of curate your own travel plans uh, and still come and participate. And it makes it awesome for the family. So if your wife or kids are coming along, which would normally be yep. bored in the hotel room, you're at yep. Kennedy Space Thank Center, you're in Louisville, or Kentucky, where there's so many different things to bags. do there. So, yeah. 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 And, and, you know, not everyone wants to take their kids to Vegas because, you know, it's not the best place True. for best place for kids. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, you know, the other thing, too, um, it's inter interesting. We're, we're talking about Vegas and I didn't have a chance to go to DEF CON this year. Ken went. I wasn't feeling well. And, you know, tra when you're on the East Coast traveling to Vegas, it's a huge trip, especially with kids. It's a mm -hmm. huge haul. 
Um, so we, we, we like the idea our in our ultimate goals to have hopefully some more conferences in, in the future. Right. Um, we've, we've talked about it, but to stay kind of East coast focused. So our, like our ultimate goal would probably be like, and it just, Throwing out there, we have a conference in Florida and Louisville, maybe one in Virginia and or South Carolina and Atlanta or Virginia and Atlanta. But to stay Eastern, um, I think it's it's a good – a lot of people don't like to travel out West. Like you said, Vegas is amazing in some aspects and not really friendly for a lot of people, you know, people especially that don't drink or gamble. It's kind of like I don't, I don't drink or gamble. So when I went to Vegas, it, it's interesting, it's fascinating, but I just couldn't see being there with my kids. Like, I don't know, other than being at the pool or something, I don't know, it's maybe not the best, best place. So I agree with you trying to find different venues, um, just trying to be unique and different, you know, differentiating. That's our thing. You know, how do, how do we, um, how do we disrupt an industry to add value is the thought. So like with the venue, the hotels are just overly expensive and just the same kind of boring. So yeah, hopefully we'll find some other cool venues. Um, yeah. And if anybody has any ideas, please send them our way. Like we've kicked around the idea of like retired naval ships, for example, um, and uh, an aquarium, um, a baseball park, um, which is an interesting, a whole whole other interesting story. Um, but um, but yeah, an- anywhere different. So if anybody has ideas or whatever, they're more than welcome to shoot them out to us on social or wherever, and we'll we'll definitely investigate them. <laughs> so, so do you plan on these being like additional or just kind of rotating out yeah. some locations for your teaming? No, references? right. We, you know, we've kicked this idea around when originally when we started, we were like, okay, we're going to throw the first conference. Let's see how it goes. If the, com- if the community responds great, if they don't, we close it down. Right. If the community loves it. Um, and then after coming out off of hack space, uh, hack red, one of our um, advisors had a relationship and said, we'd love to do this down here. So it was like, we couldn't pass up the opportunity. It was a space center. It had never been done before. Our ultimate goal was, was really to do like one or two big cons and then to have 10, like one day conferences, almost like B side style, but in different cities trying to regenerate, recreate what we're doing, which we know we have this really cool working model. If we could regenerate that. Um, it's a bit, it was a big idea. It's, it's something that takes a lot more resources. Um, and that's, that's one of the things, but we thought, yeah, if we could, if we could create, and we actually bought the domain names when we were thinking about this, um, many times you do this and then don't use the domains, but, uh, it felt like a good idea. Um, hack blue con, hack red con, hack purple con, and then hack this con. The idea Mm -hmm. was like semi, semi competitions, right. With the CTFs and then have a final almost like how net wars, like a real serious CTF style at the hack, this con, um, some big ideas. It's interesting. We, we, I could, I mean, I don't, I'm curious to what the community thinks and what you think, Phil and everybody else, but I think it would be cool if we could do this in other cities, you know? I mean, I, I think there's a lot of other cities that it could work in. Um, so that was our, our idea anyway. Um, long-term we'll have to see how that plays out, but we're, we definitely have some pretty cool momentum with it and uh, want to just do the best we can with it, you know, make do the most good, you know, and uh, support our country. And that's that's another big thing um, we uh, I wanted to mention. Uh, we created a scholarship off of Hack Space. My um, my grandfather was my uh, my best friend, my mentor. He was a, a military in the military. And um, when he passed away, and a lot of people don't know this, when Hack Red was uh, being organized, um, I was doing a lot of that work from his um, hospital. Like we brought a hospital bed and he was dying from cancer. And so in between calls, I was taking care of him. And so he said to me two things. Um, and like I said, he was my best friend. We hung out almost every day. I looked just like him. He, I fell in the pool when I was two years old. He saved me. Um, he said to me, Dan, there's two things I want you to do for me when I pass away. This is right before he could stop talking because of the cancer. He said, Dan, I want you to find a way to serve your country and serve your community and then to share kindness and be kind. Um, you'll see around our conferences, um, and there's a bunch of pictures if anyone wants to see them on social. There's a happy, ha- just a big happy face and says, be kind. And then we reduplicated that at Hack Space and Binary. Um, that theme is really powerful. The other thing that was important is um, how to give back. So our conference, this kind of ecosystem, this, this ecosystem we've been developing, one really important thing is that talent that comes through that um, uh, you know, does well in CTFs or what have you, we absolutely want to, at least I, in my own personal 
because of my grandfather and his legacy to to push him towards serving our country in some capacity. Could be local government, federal, uh, the IC, um, or in the, go to the military, but serve our country in some capacity. Um, that was something that he asked me to do. Right? Um, we created a scholarship. Um, there's uh, there's thousand dollar scholarships. They're for veterans or active duty transitioning, becoming a veteran, transitioning into cyber. Um, we just awarded a veteran. Um, through uh, White White Knight, um, one of the founders there who's going to do a training referred us to a veteran that's transitioning. This young man was special forces, super smart, doing all the certs. And he said to me, Dan, I'm struggling because I can't pay for all these certs. And so hearing that as a guy that's you know clearance, I mean, brilliant, uh, he served our country for eight years, I think it was six or eight years. Um, special forces doesn't have money to pay for an extra cert. We're, that scholarships for those um, men and women uh, that have served our country. So I have those available. Um, if they go to buildcyber.org, they can fill out the form there. Um, and we'd love to talk to them. And uh, I just wanted to bring that up, um, kind of a really important point. And then one other thing, Phil, I know because we're kind of running on time now. Um, Red Seer, our offensive security firm, w- one of the things we do uh, is uh, we take 30% of our net revenue so if a company comes and pen, we use our service for a third party pen test or um, one of our services, we take 30 percent of the net revenue to pay your, your, your contractors if necessary, whatever. But the net revenue, 30 percent of it, we put back into the, these conferences and education programs to fund it. You know, our ultimate goal is to build that up. A lot of the people we're training to ultimately bring on as interns and get them hands-on training, eventually hire them if, if they would like to, if not go somewhere else, but use a portion, a large portion of that profit to fund this mission, um, to build something foundational in a long-term effect, as opposed to saying, Hey, Phil, can you refer me to the biggest corp in the world to give me a hundred grand? And don't get me wrong. We would love that if it mm-hmm. made sense with the mission, but, uh, we, we, we want to work. You know, we want as ourselves, I'm speaking now as the founder and Ken can speak. We want to roll up our sleeves, hire us, put us to work, hire us as a third party firm. We'll prove ourselves. Um, I'm certain of that. And uh, and then from that, those proceeds can then fund this. And maybe, even you know, the people that hire us, you make them, you know, sponsors. There's a lot of interesting things we can do. Um, but we it's something I wanted to bring up to everybody, to your followers, um, to your attention, that we, we take this portion back to fund this, mainly because we want to fund it ourselves. We don't want any handouts. We want to roll up our sleeves, go to work. And we can use that as a part of the hiring and training mechanism with the, you know, because when you bring on an intern to get those hands-on skills, it's, it's, it's great to sit on a real you know, a real engagement um, or to write or be involved in writing and reviewing a real report, maybe sitting on a, a CISO readout. What does it look like to, to tell a CISO their baby's ugly, which many don't want to hear? Um, it's no, it, it's serious. And there's, yeah. there's a craft to doing that. There's a, there's a, I've had to learn myself, right. It's sitting on some of our calls with these guys, they're unbelievable at how they do it um, because it's a sensitive thing, but learning those soft skills that maybe the cert doesn't teach you, the university's definitely not teaching yeah. you we can teach those things with the mentoring and training program through serving contracts. So wanted to throw that out there. That, yeah, that's and for, anybody. Another, for anybody listening, another way you can contribute to that. In addition is we're, at, we're having a charity auction uh, after hack Redcon at the end at our after party, where we're going to be auctioning off all sorts of cool stuff, flippers, um, hardware things, um, certs, uh, vouchers, training vouchers. If anybody out there is, you know, wanting to contribute to this, um, please get in touch with Dan or myself, and we would uh, love to have additional items in in the auction. Um, my yeah. wife, Jamie, uh, does all the artwork. We got this incredible Look at this. painting. This... <laughs> she just finished hot off the press. This thing That's is awesome. ridiculous. This is a pa- this is a hand-painted one-of-one canvas. So we did this with Hack Space. Jamie, his his wife's an amazing artist. She the Hack Space logo. If, if everyone doesn't know, behind Ken in that back wall, there was a hand painted. Phil, I don't know. Did you come to the? the yes. Were you part of the? Okay, cool. So it's a smaller painting, and so I said we threw out the idea of like we'll do an auction this year. A friend of a friend of ours, a re- very good friend, in the car business twenty five years. He's going to come and do auctions like a real auction style. He's from Nashville, so it should be fun. Um, the whole point of this with this painting and these items. And like Ken said, if anyone else wants to contribute to please let us know all of those funds will go back into funding education programs 
paying for more certs, getting more veterans trained, more low income communities trained. So it's it's fun. It, it should be a good cause. And uh, hopefully I, I might even be bidding on that painting. I uh, actually commissioned it <laughs> and paid for all the costs. And it's like one of my things is it, when she finished it, she was Ken was kind of sneaking in. Of course, we're hackers. Right. So <laughs> he, <laughs> he came in. It was like halfway done. And it was just amazing. I said, Shit, man, I would really like that for my office here. And <laughs> so, uh, yeah, pretty excited about it for sure. Very cool. So we're getting down towards the end of the show. And so is there anything you'd like to share before we wrap it up? Ken? Um, come come to our conference. Uh, buying tickets helps us out, helps us keep going this mission. Because as Dan said, we don't really have any corporate sponsors footing the bill. So it's all our rolled up sleeve work, um, personal investment in time. And what, you know, ticket sales help keep us available to do this. So there are still tickets available. Go to hackredcon.com, hackredcon.com, and uh, you know, <laughs> click that Eventbrite link, and uh, we might do something special for Phillips. Uh, just thinking out loud from yep. Phillips listeners yeah. um can we offer some free tickets or something yeah definitely and we feel we, we talked about it so i don't know how you're going to push it out but we um we, we have some free tickets that that we'd like to give out to some of your listeners and also a discount code um so we can coordinate that and maybe drop some links sure. um and uh yeah for my my final um thing i'd like to say is find a way to give back contribute get involved um, if you're, if you're an introvert, um, and you, you come to these conferences, you're going to find so many other introverts that are like you, and you're going to find people like myself that are extroverted that ha- are, my whole life is surrounded around introverts. I've been in tech, my, my, most of my career finance and tech, um, w- come, um, and not only to our conference, any conference, get involved, um, find a way to give back. It'll, it'll help your career. It'll help you get a job. And if you, if you need any help whatsoever, please join our discord. Um, our discord, if you go to our website, like, uh, our website, like Ken mentioned, hackredcon.com, there's a discord logo, click on it, join. If you have any questions, please don't be, um, afraid you reach out to us and, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing everyone at the conference and Phil, we appreciate you, man, how much, how much you give back and all the things you're doing. So, uh, it's, it's great. It's great. Yeah. We, we serve the same mission. So that's one of the, one of the things I, I like. So thanks for taking time out of your schedule today to share about your awesome organization and conference. So I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. And thanks Thank everyone. For having us. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks everyone for joining. We'll see you on the next episode. And for anyone in the Dallas Fort Worth area, Monday is our local DEF CON Denton DEF CON group DC 940. And we meet at graffiti pasta at six 30 in Denton, Texas on the square. And this month we got someone from protect AI D he's going to be talking about AI security. Their company just launched the very first ever, uh, bug bounty platform for AI and machine learning. So I hope you can join us. So thanks everyone. Thank you for listening to the Philip Wiley show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. In the meantime, to learn more about Philip, go to thehackermaker.com and connect with him on LinkedIn and Twitter at Philip Wiley. Until next time.